Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Crazy times. <laughs> Thank you. All right, settle down, settle down. Uh, yeah, love you too. That's a HR issue. We can bring that up later on. Uh, yeah. How you all going? You good? Sick. Awesome. I should tell you a little something about myself. Uh, I'm 43 years old, guys, and I know there's people in the audience here this evening. You're in, you're in your 20s, you're in your 30s. Uh, did notice I didn't say anyone younger than that. I've learned from past experiences. I recently did a gig and I was mentioning that to the crowd and there was a woman up the back and she went, um, excuse me? And it was really early in the show and I was like, yeah, yeah, sorry. And she said, um, you didn't ask if there were teenagers in because I'm 19 years old. I was like, firstly, that's a lot of confidence from a kid that age. I would never have the confidence to do that in a group. And secondly, I don't think a 43-year-old man should be on stage going, any teenagers in? <laughs> I've got a couple of drink cards, so yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, but as I was saying, for you 20 and 30-year-olds, I'll let you know what the future has to offer because when you're in your 20s and 30s, you know, you go to parties. That's what you guys do, don't you? Loose units, you head out, you crazy cats. But when you get your 40s, you don't go to parties. You know what you do? You go to functions. That's what you do. You put a lanyard on, you turn up to these things. They're amazing. And what I hate about functions is I'm an adult. I should be able to wear what I want. But there's always a dress code. There's always a dress code. It kills me. And for men, we're very simple creatures. There's not a lot of breadth to that dress code. It's how much of a suit do you have to put on to turn up to this thing? Is it full formal, semi-formal, half a mongrel formal, whatever it is. But it's this dress code that always throws me off because I never understand what the KPI is. Because I got invited to this function and I said, yep, come along, this is great. And then down the bottom of the invite, it just reads, and the dress is cocktail. <laughs> I never know what that means. Cocktail, great, there's gonna be cocktails there. That's fantastic, great. But they're supposed to impress me, not the other way around. Why do I have to do dry cleaning just so I can drink a Long Island iced tea? This makes no sense. Because the fact is there's cocktails there. I'm about to drink them. I'm about to drink copious amounts of alcohol in a very short period of time. If I'm about to get rat ass, you know what genre of suit I'd prefer to wear? Track. <laughs> like say what you want about junkies, but I don't know how to dress appropriately, you know what I mean? They're ready for the destination, guys, okay? <laughs> if it's a good function, the dress code goes track then birthday. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's good times. <laughs> but this function that I was invited to, it wasn't for social reasons. Oh no, I was actually invited to do a gig and this will blow your minds apart, guys. Little old me, I was invited to perform for a, a Toyota car dealership in Adelaide. Because <laughs> my career's going all right. And <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to give a shit. I'm not. Do you know why? Because I have a family at home and I have a mortgage with rising interest rates. You know what my bank manager won't take for payment? Artistic integrity. That's what I was... <laughs> So I turn up pronto to this gig and no one was there yet. This is before everyone had turned up. And I was talking to the host of the evening. And the host was also the owner of this Toyota car dealership. Yeah. And it was everything when you mentally picture a car dealer. <laughs> Who would have thought you can't trust a man whose job description is dealer? But, and he said to me, you know, before everyone turns up, I'll let you know the lay of the land, right? There's gonna be some professionals there. There's gonna be business associates, obviously. People from Toyota, they're gonna be there. And because I'm hosting, I'll get out. I'll tell a couple of gags. Get them all warmed up, then I'll bring you on. I was like, cool, bro. After my set, I'm gonna sell some cars, so. We're all gonna give it a shot. And I was, I was waiting off stage much like I was here this evening. And this is arguably the worst introduction I've ever had in my life. Cause he dropped a couple of gags out. They weren't too bad, they're well received. And then he said, okay guys, settle down, settle down. We got a stand up comedian. Uh, he costs a lot of money, so it better be good. <laughs> like I'm happy for any gig, but seriously? Costs a lot of money, so it better be good. <laughs> I don't have an option. I got to the microphone and said, wow, what a coincidence. That was the first thing I said when I bought my last Toyota. <laughs> so, just on tour to say, shop Subaru, really, is what I'm here to let you all know. Um, do you know, I also found out about this recently. Do you know that there's adults out there who don't drink coffee? Did you know those people exist? 
There's always one in an audience. There's always one. <laughs> yeah. Just, I just get up with motivation. Do you? Uh, uh, was there was a gentleman here. You're right there. You put your hand up. What is your name, Big Rig? Brad. Brad. Out of the gates, Brad. Good beard too, Brad. That's not messing around, is it? Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah. Brad, is this your lovely partner? Yeah, because she was also like fucking him. Hey. <laughs> He does not drink caffeine and it kills me. Brad, why don't you drink coffee? There's always Coke for it. There's always Coke for it? I'm assuming in a can? <laughs> Great. Because this is on camera, so... <laughs> so you get your caffeine from Coca-Cola. Have you ever tried a coffee, Brad? Never tried it. You've never, like... Do, have you smelt it? And do you think that seems all right? Not yeah, it's hard not to. That is true. We're here in Melbourne. <laughs> you cannot be not downwind from a coffee. So you've never tried it in your life. Brad, you're missing out, bro. It's good stuff. Although, look, I get it. Some people don't like it. Some people don't like the taste. I got a mate of mine. He's like, I don't like the taste of coffee. I don't like it. He said, it tastes like burnt water. <laughs> I'm like, that's steam. Uh, what are you talking about? And look, I get some people get put off by coffee too because it gets them a bit... Uh, you know, it's all like, we love coffees, but then you're like, hey, ah, oh, nah, ah, ah, I need a toilet or a drop sheet. Ah. You know what I mean? And, but I'm just throwing this out here, which is more of a public service announcement for anyone out here who doesn't drink coffee, especially you adults out there. Um, when us normal people are getting a coffee, and uh, again, I don't want to get you offside. I'm just saying when we're at the cafe in the morning and we're there to get a coffee, if you're not there for a coffee, and I do mean this uh, with all sincerity, get the fuck out of the way. Like, <laughs> move. You're a speed hump to what we need right now, okay? Because have you ever been in a situation where you've been up early enough that the cafe's not even open yet? You don't feel like you've got more of a problem in your life when you're circling out the front, <laughs> just looking at this thing. Like a stray dog looking for a bone. <laughs> Let's make this happen. And they always do the same thing too, cafes. They open it up and they start setting up their outdoor furniture. You're like, now's not the time! What are you doing? Rev your engines. What are you doing? It's caffeine o'clock. And uh, it wasn't just me. There was another gentleman there. He was waiting as well, but he got there before me. I thought, you've worked hard for this, Chief. You get in there. And he strolled in, talked to the guy behind the counter with all the confidence in the world. He just goes, yeah, get him, mate. Can I just get a uh, takeaway hot chocolate? Yeah. The fuck are you doing here? What are you doing here? <laughs> Seriously. Like, I need a coffee. You need to go to the supermarket and order some Cocoa Pops. Like, that's... That's not an adult's order. Just, no, 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 I want chocolate in my tum-tum. Yeah, -tum. yum, 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 yum. What are you talking about? And I know people say that, they say, no, but I'm a chocoholic. You have to understand, I'm a chocoholic. Like, I love chocolate. <laughs> I'm addicted to chocolate. Are you? Are you? Like, you need chocolate like the rest of us need coffee, do you? Like, you need chocolate just to get up in the morning, do you? Like, you need chocolate just to be civil to people in society. You need chocolate to keep your fucking family together. Like, you... You have to understand, I've got two gorgeous kids at home. I love them dearly, but you also have to understand coffee turned up first, all right? I'll give away the kids before I give away the coffee, okay? I will take my long black over those two short whites. I will. I'll do that. Uh, yeah. Also, at the age that I'm at, I, what gets me through is that I love doing this. I love doing stand-up comedy, but I dream about retirement. I could do, I fantasise about it. You have to understand, retirement is the light at the end of the tunnel. They were just Andy Dufresne trying to get through it, trying to get out of Shawshank. And retirement looks sick. It looks awesome. Like, you ever talk to a retiree? Their day sound awesome. So I was like, what are you up to today? Oh, I gotta go to the post office. And that's the end of their sentence. So that's, that's a good day, okay? Just drop a package off to a scratchy, head home, wait for the chase to start. Like, that is a good time. Like my mum's retired, I talk to her, she sounds like she's got a great life. She does things like volunteer work. She'll say, David, I'm just doing some volunteer work to shake things up. I'm like, how good is your life if you can pull a worky? <laughs> it's good times, it's good. Because days off are sick. I don't know why we don't have more days off. I can't figure that out. Like for hundreds of years, over seven days, most of us will work five days a week and we all just accept that and move through it. We should have more days off. Matter of fact, the days off we've got, there's not enough. But even the days off we do have, <laughs> really the reason for having them very rarely stands up to scrutiny. But we don't scrutinise them. Why? Because they're days off. 
Like, I don't have a good friend who goes to church. I'm not against church. I'm not here to yucky yums. But I'm just saying, I don't have a good mate who goes to church. But if I asked any of my good friends, would you like four days off for the death of our Lord? They're like, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> I mean, I know he came back on a Sunday, but I still need Monday to wrap my head around it. It is every year. What a party trick. It is incredible. Like Labor Day, most countries have some form of Labor Day. Labor Day is there to remind us that unions fought for an eight hour working day. And we take a day off for that. So we take a day off work to celebrate work. <laughs> Wrap your noodle around that. Like if your relationship was like that, things aren't going well. Like if you said to your partner, hey babe, anniversary coming up, what do you want to do? And they're like, not fucking see you. Uh, <laughs> That'd be great for all of us, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> like when Queen Elizabeth passed away, that was obviously a very sad time, but every Australian had the exact same train of thought, which is that sad. Do we still get a day off for your birthday? So still... <laughs> Look, let's get down to brass tacks, Lizzie, okay? What are we doing? And I know there's some people watching this that are thinking, mate, it's a little off colour, okay? You don't celebrate a person's birthday after they've passed away. And to those people, I say, Merry Christmas. <laughs> but my only problem with retirement is it is wasted in a time in your life when you have the least amount of energy. That's my problem with it. Like, you get to 65 or 70 and people are like, what do you want to do now? You don't have to work. You're like, oh, I just want to go nappy poos. That's what I want to do. I'm done. Like, personally, I think it should be reversed. I think you shouldn't have to work your entire life. Then you start a job in the twilight years and you work that every day until your death. <laughs> I call it the King Charles. Like, I don't wish anyone to lose a parent, but how weird was it when a 74-year-old man was addressing international media and going, I'm gonna miss my mummy. You're like, ah. You're the creepiest man in your family and your brother's Prince Andrew. What the hell? This just happens. Like, everyone was getting into Chuck when he was getting coronated. Do you remember that? They were putting the crown on his head and he was just stony-faced and people were like, he's not even showing emotion. I'm like, of course not showing emotion. He's shitting his pants. He's 74 years old and he started his first ever shift at work. Like, he doesn't... I don't know what's going on. Ah, do I put money aside for super? Like, I, ah. I get paid in vouchers with my mum's face on it. That's weird. That's weird. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but being in my 40s now, people might ask, even for a midlife crisis, that used to happen when I was younger. Guys my, my age now, they would uh, have a midlife crisis. But uh, this is as close as I can get to a midlife crisis, which is <laughs> I own a two-stroke ex-Australia Post moped. <laughs> yeah. Do you hear that? Uh, that's the sound of a room full of people getting turned on. Uh, that is. It's true. No irony. I think it's sick. I love riding that thing around. Just the wind in my helmet and uh, just fanging along the roads. But... <laughs> what really took the jam out of my donut is I was riding around my neighbourhood recently and unbeknownst to me, a friend of mine, he was videoing me. <laughs> and then he sent the message to me and I didn't get it until I got home. Pulled my phone out and clicked on it and I thought, oh, that looks shit. Uh, that genuinely looks crap. Like I look like a dog with worms just dragging my coit along the back. It was horrific. It looked like I was trying to take the bike as a suppository. Like it was gross. <laughs> Honestly, when people see me on that moped, they must think the same thing as when they see Melania Trump just holding Donald Trump's hands. They must think, surely you don't enjoy riding that. So <laughs> It's red and it looks like it's about to break down. Like it is <laughs> gross. But being the age that I am, a bit more TLC has to occur and I... Now, I love a bit of like a head, neck and shoulder massage. I love getting a bit of that. Jeez, I love that. But because I'm on tour, I always have to take a punt on a massage therapist. I never know exactly what I'm walking into. And recently I got a massage and I didn't realise this technique had been invented and it really threw me off. Because I turn up to a place, middle of the afternoon, of course no one's in there. 
all you upstanding civilians are at work, aren't you? So I stroll in. I said, oh, have you got an opening? Yes, we do. Get in there, Chief. Okay. So I lay down there on the table. I'm just there in my underwear. And then the massage therapist turns up. She flicks her sandals off. She then climbs up onto the table and she starts walking across my back. Now, I don't know if you've been in a situation where you're expecting hands to touch you and a pair of size seven start traversing across your spinal cord. But I tell you what, it can really throw you off. And she asked me the obligatory massage therapist thing, which she said, is the pressure okay? I'm thinking, I don't know. I don't have a point of reference at this point in time. This is the first stampede I've ever been a part of. And what if it wasn't okay? What's she gonna do? It's her body weight. <laughs> Is she gonna say, oh, okay, well then if you don't like this, I'll jump on the keto diet, come back in four to six weeks, see if my BMI is to your liking, see if you can work this out. And there was a couple of things that threw me off through the half an hour. And I don't know if I'm being high maintenance, maybe you can tell me. But uh, one of the things I struggle with is I, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I genuinely could not breathe. And I've been a fan of breathing for a while now. <laughs> like, I've liked it since I started. And I had to time it because when she's walking up and down on my body, when she lifted her foot, it was an opportunity just for me to open up one side of my lungs. Like she would, and it'd be, have to be quick before she put her foot down. Like I have to go, <gasps> and then as she stands back down, just <gasps> oxygen would just shoot back out of my face. Like she's playing the world's saddest human bagpipe. <laughs> and the other thing that I struggle with is because I'm laying on the table, of course my head is sitting in the massage table hole. You know what I'm talking about when you leave a massage and you've got that imprint on your face, looking like you passed out in a toilet seat. <laughs> Just like this. And as she's going up and down, it feels like my face is getting pushed further and further and further into that hole. I don't know if you've ever been pushed face first through a hole by a random woman before. <laughs> but it's not relaxing. It's a birthing suite is what was going on. I'm like, if I get to the other side, somehow she's my mum. Like, this is unnatural. But as I walked away from that massage, I was thinking, why was this technique invented? I don't understand. She could have used her hands. Look, they're nimble. Your feet are blunt force instruments. What's she doing that for? But then there was only one conclusion that I could come to, which was there was a massage therapist that had one too many creepy men turning up to their job and just saying, hey, uh, can I get a little bit in any hair? Hair. And she's like, Fuck if I stand on him. Like he can't, he can't roll over. Like he can't, whatever randomness he has, he can just stay there as I squelch it from his backside down. Cause it's heartbreaking for me now that I try out different massage therapists to see that they've got warnings now in the windows that say, warning, we do not give sensual massages. What a heartbreaking thing to have to describe at your job. Like no one else has to do that at their job. You don't go visit your accountant and they're like, hey mate, uh, thanks for turning up. Um, I should get this out of the way early. Um, I'm not gonna jerk you off. Because uh, by the looks of things, the tax office has already fucked you. So. You can't go twice that quickly. <laughs> I'm working out. Being at the age I am though, now I've got more medical issues than I ever used to have. It's frustrating. Like last year, I had a situation where my heart felt like it was beating out of my chest and I had pretty extreme insomnia. Sweet combo. Yeah. <laughs> and for the first week, it threw me off. I thought, what am I doing? I'm barely getting a wink of sleep. And by the second week, my partner said, maybe you should go to the doctor. But living up to all middle-aged men cliches, I was like, oh, oh maybe I can walk it off. Like, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I don't know why, <laughs> just go to the doctors, mate. The only thing I can put it down to is, is my upbringing. You see, when you're my age and in the time that I was born, I've lived through two centuries, the back half of the 20th century and now the first half or the first 20 years, I should say, the 21st century. And I can let you know, very different worlds to live in, especially when you're a man and according to mental health and, and your wellbeing, you know, because men in the 80s, 90s, they didn't have conversations like they do now. Like now, men have conversations of like, hey mate, what's in here? 
What's this guy saying? <laughs> hey, let's turn him off. Let's open that up. <laughs> like that never happened when I was a kid. I wasn't surrounded by men that would do that. Like my father was a creative man, but he still wouldn't talk about his feelings. It wouldn't have happened. If I went to my dad and said, hey dad, I've got feelings. He'd be like, oh, I didn't know I had a daughter. This is <laughs> shock for everyone, really? Do some cross dish with your mum. Like he wouldn't know what to do with it. I grew up with that phrase, like so many men did back then, just man up, mate, just man up. Come on, man up. Like your gender was on the line if you're gonna tackle an issue. And if you weren't, then you weren't man enough. That's a stupid thing to say. Like what a stupid world to live in. Women, you didn't do that. You're smarter than us, you didn't do that shit. You didn't say that phrase. No one ever said that phrase. No one ever said, come on, mate, just warm it up. <laughs> come on, grow a vag, get in there. <laughs> Come on, flap up, chop, chop, let's go. <laughs> Don't clap that. <laughs> it's an unfortunate sound effect, but... Um... <laughs> so I go to the doctor and I explained what was going on. He said, cool, we'll do some heart tests on you. And all the results came back and he said, everything seems okay, but your blood pressure is extremely high. He said, is there stress in your life? It's like, yeah. Like, do you live on the face of the planet? Of course, there's stress in my life. There's stress with the rising cost of living, how expensive everything is. There's stress in just conversations. You never know where a conversation is gonna go and if you're gonna land on a landmine, you know? Like, I remember a couple of years ago, you could say the phrase, hey, you look a million dollars. And that was a nice phrase. That was something that people would go, oh, stop it, you charmer, you bloody silver tongued devil. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> but now, thanks to the real estate market absolutely going off its tartars, have you seen the shitholes that are now sold for a million dollars? Yeah, if someone says now you look like a million dollars, what they're really saying is you need to be rebuilt from the ground up. You <laughs> are a crack den, that's what you are. And I don't even think the big things stress you out. Yes, they do, obviously, big things stress you out, but then it's the little things as well. Yeah, you know, like, oh, there's so many little things in my life that grate on me. Or little alarms and things that are trying to get my attention. Like my car, my car is just a rolling alarm. Just an alarm to let me know that my seatbelt hasn't been put on properly. Alarms to let me know the door's slightly ajar. Alarms to let me know the oil needs to be changed. Alarms to let me know the petrol needs to be filled up. Alarms to let me know that I'm reversing back and I've only got so much space. And alarms to let me know that my eyes obviously don't work and there's a car stationary in an intersection and I'm about to ram up the arse of it. Like in the middle of the night when I hear my car alarm go off, I'm like, just take the whinging bitch. So yes, <laughs> take it. I don't even like that Toyota, you know, like, I'm done. In my house, there's so many alarms in my house that I feel I don't need. And my fridge door, my fridge door sets off an alarm to let me know that it's been open for too long. I'm like, yeah, I know fridge. It's 11 o'clock at night, and I'm still trying to workshop if cheese, yogurt, gherkins, and chocolate are a good combination. <laughs> Why are you getting in the way of my creativity? <laughs> like my washing machine. My washing machine, after it's finished a load, sets off an alarm to let me know that it's finished. I'm like, yeah, I'm aware. There was a goddamn hurricane coming out of the laundry <laughs> for the last two hours. Now there's deathly silence. I don't assume you're now going for a smoko and then you're gonna come back and get knuckles deep into those pesky stains. Because I'm the least handiest man in the world. I, I don't like being on the tools. And there was an alarm that was going off while I was sitting on the couch. And initially I thought it was from outside. But then I realised it's inside my house. I'm like, what is that? Once every half an hour I could hear this alarm going off. Finally I figured out it was the fire alarm in my hallway. I'm like, what, why is it beeping at me? What's going on? There's no smoke anywhere. And so I went to my neighbour, I'm like, what's going on with this thing? And he said, oh, it's actually low on batteries. That's why it's beeping at you. I'm like, right, so it's beeping at me to let me know that it barely has enough energy to beep at me. <laughs> I reckon hold on to those bullets. What do you reckon, Chief? <laughs> Maybe use them when they count, all right? And I got so annoyed, I got up on my stepladder, I'm wrestling with the thing and out of aggression, I just yanked the battery out. Do you think I've replaced it? Fucking <laughs> up. <laughs> I know, if a fire actually rips through my house, the only hope I've got for an alarm is I've just got to wish the first thing the fire does is burn the fridge door off and <laughs> we'll be safe. 
So the doctor said, right, so there's stress in your life. And I said, yeah, there's just stress, yes, every day. He said, how do you deal with that stress? And I'm like, you guys, I, I do breathing exercises, I do yoga, I fucking drink. What do you mean, <laughs> what do I do with stress? It gets a Friday night, I go on the couch and knock off a bottle of red wine, I go on YouTube and I find out what happened to bands in the 90s. Isn't that... <laughs> isn't that what everyone does? Yeah. It's the best. And it's like he'd never heard that answer before. The doc was like, really, so you drink? I was like, yeah, I don't think this one's out of the box, to be honest, doc. <laughs> you would hear this a bit. And I'm not saying this bravado way of like, yeah, I drink like what a legend. I don't drink like I used to, not at all. But Friday comes and... Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Like I know, and I love a wine. I know I like wine, why? Because now any time that I try to type the word point into my phone, predictive text just changes it to Pinot. <laughs> that's a cry for help, that's what that is. But I, I just think with drinking, because if you don't drink, good on you, that's great. Like I, I'm not, <laughs> I don't want you to. This isn't me trying to get you on board. I'm just saying it, there's something, there's a confidence about drinking. That's what I like about it. It's a vice that's been around for thousands of years. It's right there. And I know it's been around for thousands of years. How do I know that? Because we've invented a word for not drinking. Sober. That's a strange word to invent. That's just describing your natural state. That's weird, isn't it? Like you're born sober. You do most of your activities in your life sober. So it can describe most things in your life. But if you say it, it feels like you need to say it. It's like, what did you do this morning, mate? Ah, just dropped the kids off to school sober. <laughs> this is good. Um, and then I went to work and I was celibate. Didn't try to fuck anyone. So. It's a win for HR, I think we can all agree. It's good. So he said, okay, so you drink? I said, yes, I drink. Do you smoke? No, I don't smoke. He said, do you exercise? I said, look, I try, but I got kids and you know, it's hard to get a routine on, especially when you've got young kids. He said, well, at least you try. Because you see, we sit down too much as a society and that is leading to a sedentary lifestyle and that is shortening our lives. And after he told me that, I did think, firstly, impressive. I mean, we're sitting ourselves to death, not bed. <laughs> and then secondly, if that is the case, I hope there's not an afterlife because I do not want to be trading stories with people from other generations about what did them in because I'd feel slightly sheepish about that one. Like if you're getting along with a dude up there in whichever place that you've landed, you're having a good yarn and you're like, oh, mate, I guess we'll, you know, how did it all come to this? <laughs> you're like, well, if you must know, my friend, I, I fought in the Great War. Yeah, it was everything you read about, it was hell. And, and we were there in the mud and the trenches that was that warfare. And I remember the Turks just stormed over the top and they completely took out the entire platoon. What kind of demons did you have to face in the 21st century, my friend? <laughs> Comfy chairs, bro. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like recliners. Um, don't know if you had a couple of beers and sat in a beanbag. Very hard to get out of. <laughs> <laughs> and footstools. Uh, so I guess you could say the Ottomans did us both in. Thank you. That's the best joke I've ever written. So... I do like that joke a bit too much for what is probably a, a horrific pun. Um, I do remember I wrote that joke and I showed it to my partner. I haven't even performed it yet. We were both so impressed, we both took the day off. Like we were, it's a belter. I'm gonna buy a yacht with that one, that's great. <laughs> but two, have, I have two gorgeous little girls. I love my girls, I do. I like having girls, to be honest. I know this is a cliche, but boys look like absolute wrecking balls. They do. We were at a party recently and there was all these kids around and they were getting a bit restless. We gave them some books, no word of a lie. All these beautiful little hardcover children's books. The girls started thumbing through them, having a look at all the pictures, trying to read the words. The boys at this barbecue, they were just throwing the books in the air and headbutting them. <laughs> it's not a joke. 
So like, who's a big red dog now, Clifford? Hey, uh, take you out, mate. <laughs> okay, right. But having girls, someone asked me recently, they said, uh, having girls, you'd be pro equality. I'm like, I don't have to make women to think they're a good idea. I, I, was, I was always on board. <laughs> And if anything, because I have daughters, I'm not pro-equality. If anything, I've swung hard the other way. Like I want women to be the dominant gender so that my girls, when they become my age, turn into CEOs and they're making bank and they put me in a good home. <laughs> yeah. I want them at the pointy end of the boardroom table and they've got some hot 20-year-old male PA and they're just like, hey, toots. <laughs> Why don't you go get some coffees while the big girls talk about the problems, eh? <laughs> uh. Just a latte, sugar dick. Um, <laughs> but there's so much organising that you need when you have kids, like so much. As I said, I, I, I've never loved humans more in my life than I love my girls, but <laughs> they don't stop. Like, they just don't, like they're gonna be fed three times a day. Like, they're like Tamagotchis. They just keep going. <laughs> going. <laughs> it's not just planning every day too, you've got to plan into the future. Like my eldest has just started primary school. Someone said to me, do you know what high school she's going to go to? I'm like, mate, I don't know what she's having for lunch. Like I don't, I don't know, okay. I don't know if I'm going to send them to public school or private school or spend 20 grand a year on Steiner so they know how to do macrame. I don't know. <laughs> but all I know is that I won't be sending them to single gendered schools. I wouldn't send my girls to an all-girls college. If I had boys, I wouldn't send them to an all-boys college. Why? Because I thought it was weird in high school and I still think it's weird now. I don't understand. We're living in a world that's pushing for equality. We're pushing for unisex toilets. People can crap next to each other, but could we do algebra next to each other? That's a bridge too far. I'm sorry, I can't see it. Like how little faith do you have in teenagers that they can't learn anything because there's other bits around? The I before E except after, I don't know, I just want to touch that. I just want to... Is, uh, put, uh, is the answer down there? Like, is it, is Pythagoras here or there? Uh, uh, touch me, like. <laughs> I just think the more you're around more people, the more tolerance you have for everyone. That's how it works. Like, I've read this heartbreaking article about a boy in an all boys college in Sydney and he came out as gay and they just bullied him incessantly until he left the school. And I thought, not only is that heartbreaking, it makes no sense. Why are you picking on this kid? He's a boy who realises he's attracted to boys and guess what, he's around boys five days a week. He's living his best life. <laughs> if anything, we should be picking on the straight kids. They're the vegetarian shopping at the abattoir. Like what are, <laughs> what are they doing? But people tell me, they say, no, all girls college and all boys colleges, they're good schools, they get them ready for life. I'm like, do they? <laughs> You're putting in an institution where there's only one gender and everyone's wearing the same clothes. I reckon you're getting them ready for jail. I mean, <laughs> I mean 40 grand a year, white collar crimes, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not insider trading if you don't get caught, you know what I'm saying? It's amazing what is expected of me compared to what was expected of my father. Only in one generation, things have just shifted dramatically. Like my dad, he would come home from work and his van would pull into the driveway and I distinctly remember my mum, she'd see him just through the window and talk to my brother and I and say, okay guys, your father's coming home, leave him alone. You're like, what? But I've got love and admiration for him. No, nah, leave that shit at the door. Like just <laughs> leave him alone. And dad would just walk in, just on his own, just sit on a couch, just read the newspaper, watch the TV, just on his own. Just, no one pestered him. He sat in his chair. He had a chair. I don't have a fucking chair. <laughs> Nothing in my house is mine. Do you understand that? Like, I can't piss on my own. I go for a piss and my four-year-old just flings the door open like she's a federal officer on a drug raid. <laughs> I gotta try and hide my shame, like, ah, ah. And of course, I've got to explain the situation. That's what you've got to do to kids now. You know, you have to be like, hey, I know you're curious about what's going on. This is a private time for your father. Explain your way out of it, having to piss in your own house. And my father wouldn't do that. If I tried to open the door, my father would be like, hey, 
Take that up with your psychologist when you're 35. Like, I don't, I don't need this, all right? Because this is a nice little pick-me-up for any dads who are out there. And it only works on dads. I'm so sorry. Mums, doesn't work for you. I'm sorry about this. But thanks to our generation's fathers doing close to stuff all on the parenting stakes, everything that you do makes you look like an absolute superhero. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, if you do any semblance of parenting in front of a 75-year-old woman, she will have an orgasm. Like, <laughs> she will. If you change a nappy in front of an older woman, she's just like, what are you doing? How do you, how do, you do it slower? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> It's incredible. I was tying the shoelaces up of one of my daughters in front of my mum and her friends and they were like, oh my God, look at him, hands on dad. <laughs> he remembers their names, you know, like. It's crazy. Hands on dad and you take that. You take that any day of the week. What a great review, hands on dad. I'll take that. But it's funny for men, you get one degree from that and it turns. <laughs> hands on dad, hey. Hands on uncle, no. Uh, I'd stay away from Ted, that's no good. Because <laughs> it's tough. It's tough when the kids are really young too. I remember when my girls were a couple of years younger than they are now and I had a night where my back was playing up and like anyone, your back when you plays up, you're not in a good mood. And my partner, she's very good with the girls, very good with the girls. Like she does mindfulness with my kids. It's incredible to watch. She there, if one of my kids hits their head and they're screaming, my partner's like, hey, 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 just breathe through that. It's okay, just breathe through it. It's gonna be fine, okay? Just observe it and then we'll move through it. That's really good parenting. <laughs> I am not that good. <laughs> Look, if one of my kids hits their heads and starts screaming, I'm like, hey, 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 don't tell your mum, don't. <laughs> Don't, don't. Shorty doesn't trust me, okay? It just makes it worse. Don't fucking rat on me, you dog. Like... <laughs> and... So this particular night, as I said, my back was flaring up. But my partner said, hey, I'd really like to do yoga tonight. Is that okay? And then you can put the kids down. Which, <laughs> which for people, people who don't have kids, that's the turn of phrase that means you're putting them to bed. It's not like a racehorse on a racetrack. <laughs> Just, really? You've soiled your pants again? Okay, draw the curtain. Um, we had a good run, like. Just means I was putting the kids in the bath and I'm gonna read them a book and put them to bed. And my partner said, is that okay? Then I can go do yoga. And I said, yeah, it's okay. My back's fair enough, but it's okay. And of course she said, well, you know, maybe when I come home and the girls are all asleep, then you can go to the lady yoga class and that'll open up your back problem. <laughs> and, I said, it's fine, fine, go do it. And so I put my kids in the bath. And at this time, the kids were, my youngest was probably 18 months old, a little bit older. My eldest was probably three, three and a half. And they're in the bath and there's about an inch of water in it. And my eldest said, hey, Dad, I've got to go for a poo. <laughs> and I thought, thanks for the heads up, Chief, good stuff. And I picked her up with my crook back and just waddled across and put her on the toilet, which is in the cubicle right next to the bathroom. And while I was out for 3.2 seconds, I came back in and saw that my youngest had completely shat the bath, like <laughs> destroyed it. And if you know toddlers, you'll know that if there's anything on their person, they're like, oh, that needs to be in me mouth. And <laughs> I had to mitigate this and I said, okay, no, no, relax, relax. Okay, come here, uh, we've got to wash you. Bath has been spoken for. <laughs> I'll go in the shower. But I knew if I held her in the shower, I'm gonna get wet. So I thought, all right, I'll strip my clothes off. And so I'm washing her, making sure she's all fine. My eldest is in, can you come wipe my bum, daddy? <laughs> I said, I'll get there, mate, I will get there, okay? <laughs> so I get the little one out, I dry her, I dry myself. I'm naked in my birthday suit, strolling into the toilet cubicle, about to wipe my eldest daughter's backside, and my little one toddles in, and I see that she's got poo on her left foot. I'm like, how did that happen? I thought I cleaned you entirely. I did clean her entirely, but it seemed she had more in the chamber, and she'd shat all down the hallway. It's like, how did you do that? That's more crap than child. Like, what is happening? Honestly, I was thinking if this was my dad or my brother and I were this age, we'd be put up for adoption. Like, we'd be at the front, hard rubbish night. 
He'd probably move cities, like he'd be done, okay? So I grabbed the littlest one back into the bathroom, rinse and repeat, literally. Not only am I cleaning her, I'm treating her like she's the last bit of toothpaste in the tube. Just whatever is left and you get out. And I washed her, washed myself, and then I dried her, obviously. And I didn't know what to do with her, I was in a panic. And I thought, I've just got to get her out of harm's way. And still to this day, I don't know why I did this. I threw my youngest child into the lounge room and just locked the door. Like, have fun, mate. Just crap on more expensive stuff. And so I'm looking at her and I can hear her screaming because she doesn't know what she's done. I'm like, great, I've damaged that one. That's a lot of fun. My eldest is still screaming at me. She's saying, can you wipe my bum, daddy? I said, yeah, I'll get there. And then as I'm walking away, I'm listening to my youngest child screaming, but of course I'm not looking where I'm walking. So my foot just squelches. I feel it before I see it. My foot comes out from under me and because my back's playing up, it just locks up. And then I just poof, hit the ground. I'm laying completely naked in the hallway of my own house, being sauteed in my youngest daughter's shit. And I think fair enough, I just let out a ah! And my eldest daughter, who's still on the toilet, who can't wipe her own backside, leans out from the toilet cubicle, looks me in the eye and goes, Daddy, you need to breathe. <laughs> nah. nah, good, good. It's worked out well for everyone. Because <laughs> having kids now after becoming a father, I always wonder how much discipline will I put in their lives? And it's a strange world we live in, where I think you do need a lot of discipline to survive in this day and age. Like, we live in relative comfort, but then there's so many things around, there's so much stuff. You know, there's drink and drugs and gambling and all the things, and even just your phone and how much you're on it and just scrolling through it. You need some kind of discipline to make sure that you don't just gorge yourself on everything that's around. And I don't know how much discipline to instill in the kids, like, do you, do you, do you go real hard? <laughs> That's probably not great. Like, you don't want to go tennis dad on the whole situation, you know? <laughs> We're practising backhands this morning before breakfast. You're going to hit 500 shots or daddy doesn't love you, you know? Like, <laughs> That's too much. But you don't have no discipline in their lives, so they grow up to be adults who vape, you know? And <laughs> vaping, come on, smoke like an adult. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> No, it's better for you, is it? Because it looks like there's a sex toy hanging out of your face. Like, that's weird. Mm -hmm. oh, but it's grapefruit. Mm -hmm. And I was on a long haul flight and I was waiting for the adjoining flight. Like we just landed halfway as you always do in Australia, as it takes you three weeks just to get out of the continent to fly to somewhere else. And we're waiting to get on the second flight. And so we're all a bit knackered anyway, and we're all in the line. And there was a message over the loudspeaker that said, can everyone not board the plane right now? We have to fix something. And we all went, yep, yeah, fine, sounds great. But we all just stood there because we didn't know what else to do. And Minutes start ticking on, it's turning into 20, 30 minutes, we're all getting bored, we're all on our phones. And in front of me is just a family, mum, dad, daughter looked, I don't know, 13, a son looked, I don't know, 15 or so. And the son, he got quite bored and he started thinking, what else can I do? And then he started poking his sister just in the side of the head. <laughs> not, not hard, just being an absolute pest. And I've got a brother, I know what it's like. And I barely looked up from my phone. I'm like, yeah, siblings will do that, fair enough. And the dad, he was great. He didn't turn around, he just said, mate, leave her alone, what are you doing? Leave her alone. And the son listened, I thought, well, that's nice, yeah, good on him. And then the son, you could see the wheels turning and he thought, wait a second, I can't poke her in the head. Why don't I poke my dad <laughs> in the back of the head? And I did think to myself, this free Wi-Fi is fun, but not as fun as what's about to kick off. <laughs> And the dad turned around and he presented what I now know after becoming a father as dad veins. <laughs> They're all the thoughts that you have as a father and testosterone and tiredness all teeming through your skull and then they finish right there on your temple when you go, nah, don't, you'll go to jail. And <laughs> just stop there. 
And the dad looks at his son and he just goes, what are you doing, mate? What are you doing? And the son said something that absolutely shook me <laughs> because I had flashbacks to my upbringing with his son looks at his dad and goes, what are you going to do? <laughs> I was like, oh! When I grew up, if I said that to my father, don't worry about him, my mum would be like, hit him, Peter! <laughs> I'd be out. <laughs> My mum would be like, give him a roll up when he comes to. Give him a roll up. <laughs> Don't give him a little snack. Don't give him that. I'm saving those. I'm always saving the little snacks, but. And so the son backs it up. Not only he says, what are you going to do? He goes, you can't hit kids. And he's right, you can't hit kids. You should never hit kids. However, I did think if this dad snaps, he drops his son, son goes down, cops come running. I didn't see anything. I got in. You should never hit a kid, but I also think if you're a male and you've got pubes on your balls and you pick a fight, you're gonna have to go through with it. I'm sorry, that's the law of the jungle. That's how it works. I'm even thinking, how can I help out? Like the kid hasn't seen me. I could come up behind this son, just choke him out. Son just hurt. The dad would be looking at me, mate, I don't know who that was. I don't know who that was. <laughs> Who's poking who now, mate? <laughs> and the dad, I've got to give him credit. He said, no, mate, just settle down. Of course, I'm not going to hit you, but just settle down. Leave your sister alone, leave me alone. Okay, we'll be boarding soon. Settle down. And the dad turned around. And even though we could no longer see his face, you could tell dad was still steaming. Like the mum was doing that thing, she leant across, like, you did a really good job, Darren. You really did a really good job. And you could see he was like, yeah, did I, did I. Let's go on holiday, leave the son here at the terminal, we'll get him on the way back, it'll be fine. Let's take his passport. And there, there, but the son, because the dad had turned around, the son's in there just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking at his sister going, see, nothing happened. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, man, like I get it. The parents aren't gonna make a scene. I completely understand that. But this kid needs discipline. No doubt his parents pay for that holiday. You know, I'm thinking something needs to happen for this kid to learn a lesson. And as we're boarding the plane, I'm still workshopping inside my head. <laughs> and then we got on, the penny dropped. And this is real parents, you can take this home. Or if you're gonna become a parent, you can use this on any teenagers who are acting up. If your teenager's there going, what are you gonna do? You can't hit kids. Just take a step towards them and go, it's true, you can't hit kids. Oh, I never will, you'll always be safe with me. However, if you poke me one more time, I'm gonna explain in very fine detail the last time your mother and I slept together. Because <laughs> there's no teenager on the face of the planet who's like, let's see where this goes. Oh. Like, I'd be hanging it over their heads the whole time at home. You know, I'd be like, you're taking the bins out tonight? Oh, you're not? Looks like you're about to find out how your mum likes reverse cowgirl, so. That's what I thought, recyclables as well, okay, mate? Mm. <laughs> if you don't take them in in the morning, I'll text you the photos. Up to you, up to you, mate. Up to you. Hey, guys, thank you so much for listening to all of my waffle. You've been an awesome crowd. I really appreciate it.